Welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2023 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strike, the Founder and Festival Director, in conversation with Sarah Nadumi and Till Schauder. They are the team behind the film, A Revolution on Canvas, which you can see as a part of our programming at the upcoming 2023 Global Peace Film Festival. All the information about our programming can be found at peacefilmfest.org. And now let's welcome Sarah and Till to the conversation. Thank you so much for this wonderful film. Thank you for inviting it. We are delighted to have it and, and your work in the festival. So let's start out by, uh, tell us about the film. I like to say, <laughs> now that we're done making the film, it's hard to pitch it. Um, but I like to say it's a part art heist thriller, part personal documentary. Uh, my parents are both Iranian artists. And um, if you know anything about the Iranian history, we had a, uh, a Shah, a king uh, before 1979. And then there was a revolution. And my father uh, has made work um, controversial work, political work, both against the Shah's regime and against the Islamic regime. In 1980, he had an exhibition at the Tehran Museum of Contemporary Art. It was a retrospective of his work and they invited him because he had done work that was against the previous regime. When that exhibition went up, the hardliners came, they reviewed the work, they called it anti-revolutionary, they called him a traitor, and he had to flee the country. And so for 44 years, that story of that exhibition has been the story that he tells most often uh, to his friends and, and people he meets. And so we decided, well, he's been searching for that artwork for years, but we decided to pursue the investigation and make a documentary out of it. And so through that, you also learn about him as an artist, him as a father, him as a husband, and uh, our, our family life. Which crucially involves her mother, who is also an artist, a very accomplished artist. And um, um, what I personally like about the film is that the mother sort of steals the show in the end. It's a film primarily about Nikki, her dad. And then as the story unfolds, it becomes clear how his career couldn't have been without her contribution, both as artistically, but also as a woman who holds the household together through all the ups and downs that comes with living through two regime changes, basically. Well, and Sarah and Till, um, you both are accomplished filmmakers. So what uh, is this the first time that you've done a very personal film? It's not yes. the first, no, we've done other personal films in, in the sense that we've shadowed people very intimately. Right. You know, ah. we, made, we made a film uh, in, in Iran about an American basketball player who played uh, in Iran right at the time when George Bush called Iran part of the Axis of Evil. And then President Ahmadinejad called for the destruction of Israel. So at a very uh, tense moment, this American went into the lion's den, if you will, uh, to play professional sports there. And I was with him for six weeks, eight weeks, several times over throughout the course of the year, living with him. So it doesn't get much more intimate than that <laughs> in terms of access, right? And then we had another film about an Iranian rap musician who published a song that was uh, considered blasphemous. And so he had a death fatwa, meaning that uh, there was a bounty on his head and any person who felt uh, inclined to do so and killed him would collect a bounty. And I was also with him, living with him. And so it wasn't the first time that we've done such an intimate film, but it's certainly the most personal uh, because we've never made a film about a family member and that had its own um, challenges, but overall was a beautiful experience, at least in my reading. And Sarah? 
Yeah, this is the first time we've made a personal documentary. And uh, I agree that for the most part, it was, I felt really uh, lucky to be able to dig in um, into our family history, dig into like the archives of the photographs and, and the artwork and uh, kind of live with that for for so many years so so I, I, it was also very emotionally straining and difficult and uh for the you know a, as the film came to completion it was even more <laughs> nerve-wracking how's everybody going to react to it um but but yes that was our first basically our first personal documentary and it wasn't necessarily planned that way either um so Sarah is a big part of the film. There's, I always like to say there are three protagonists, Sarah, her dad, and her mother, um, but it wasn't planned that way. It was really pitched as a film about Nikki, her dad, and then it, you know, the other two main characters, Sarah and Nahid, sort of uh, became obvious that they needed to be a part of it. Um, and the way that that happened is that the interviews that we filmed between Sarah and Nikki were always shot with uh, various different cameras and so we also always had the angle where two, both of them were in the frame and uh, the dynamic was just too exciting to sort of ignore <laughs> you know and then also um, there have been other programs made about Nikki uh, on BBC or whatever so you can learn about his story in, in a sort of traditional sit-down interview way and but we realized why would we do that given our sort of perspective and access to him and so that's sort of how that came about it wasn't planned to be a personal documentary from the get-go it grew into that and definitely when people watch the, the film as it um as it unfolds as you follow the story and the the dynamics uh among all of the the main people um what you find is is an incredibly complex set of interactions and um and the you know then uh, uh, any family can have very complicated dynamics but then you also bring in the islamic regime and so what were the challenges of dealing with that regime well to the extent that you know to the extent that you are reporting on you know you are um you know you are definitely covering an aspect of that that regime's history and we're following as your father is recovering his, uh, you know, this this lost um, exhibit. I mean, we didn't deal directly with the Iranian regime. We tried to get people uh, to help us on the ground in Iran, right? Friends, people that we knew, and uh, you know, they tried in different ways uh, <laughs> to deal with the regime and. Um, they they had difficulties, you know, um, a lot of people uh, denied, you know, you know, said this is not for me, I, I, I won't, I'm not touching this story because your father is too controversial. And uh, so in, in, a, in a way we, you know, the, both of us are, are not allowed to go to Iran because of our previous films. My father is not allowed to go to Iran. Um, and so that was an immediate barrier to our story, uh, was not being able to have a relationship with the country. But then on top of that, um, it, there's also the official embargo uh, against sort of doing business with Iran. So even uh, from the HBO side, it was extremely complicated, even just to hire people on the ground, even right. if we had said we don't go, but we hire, you know, a proxy crew or something that wasn't really something we could do. So we really had to be um, kind of creative in terms of getting that footage. And we're very, very fortunate to have one character in the film, um, a, a man named Bahman Pua, who helps Sarah and Nikki try to reclaim the work from the, from the Museum of Contemporary Art in Tehran, who basically said, I don't care about repercussions. I'm going to help you and film to the extent that I can. And so he, you know, there's a scene, for example, when they finally get into the museum and, and he went in with a cell phone and we told him, you know, shoot at landscape view like this, not like that, like the social media people do, but like this, so we could use it as a scene. And that footage is so crucial. Um, 
So we got very fortunate there, but there were a myriad of obstacles. And I remember very, very long Zoom calls with the whole legal department in, at HBO, hours on end, several times, and it was uh, tricky. And, and could you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, as we think about how difficult uh, relations are on the political level between the, the US and Iran, and, and even the, you know, the, the evolution of politics within each of the countries separately, what's, you know, what's so important, you know, about telling this story now? I mean, for me, it's all it's these sort of stories are important to remind people that people are people and governments are governments. Um, those are very different things. And um, unfortunately, governments, extreme governments can be in the way of um, a lot of, you know, regular interaction, beautiful cultural exchange that otherwise would be in place. And uh, you know, with a country like Iran, it's incredible, at least to us, how much disinformation there is um, culturally and, uh, uh, you know, people are called terrorists and lumped into uh, groups that, that they're just not a part of, right? And so that's why I think it's important to tell stories that sort of show a Western audience um, maybe a side of a people that, they, that they're not aware of, even though in the film, you, you obviously you see the extremism post-revolution right but you also learn about life before the revolution and also what the diaspora is like um represented by sarah's family i would say when we premiered our iran job film the film about the basketball player in iran someone came to us afterwards and said wow well, i had no idea iranians could laugh <laughs> and it was such a dumb statement, but it was representative of, of the fact that really there's so little understanding of people from different cultures, especially in America. We truly lack that. And that there's a, such a creative population in Iran, right, that they've been fighting this regime for 45 years that that the protests that are happening right now uh, that have been happening all you know all year the women life freedom movement ha has started in 1980 <laughs> you know and all the work that my father has been doing for all these years is the same fight just fighting against extremism and so that's why i think it's important to to share the film. That, and that kind of brings us, Kelly is rejoining, uh, so I'll, I'll jump in right now. Um, that brings us to the mission of the Global Peace Film Festival, um, which is about, you know, sharing that kind, sharing that kind of information to um, exposing our audiences to, um, to different cultures um, and with a view to making the world a better place to do something to reach out so that we understand each other's cultures. So can you address that a little bit? And Kelly, if you want to jump in, um, please do. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, a year, about a year ago, this women life freedom movement in Iran started, right? It, 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 the, the, there have been many movements in Iran, all unfortunately, um, squashed by the uh, regime but about a year ago it started and and one of the things everyone th this time the diaspora around the world was actually involved in a in a much much bigger way than they have been in the past and so what happens is we're, we're asking people to amplify the voices of of the iranians inside the country right because you know you just all it takes is one loud voice to help bring down a government. You know, we uh, in the community, we say like, if Taylor Swift or if Beyonce use their platform to do something, anything, not just about Iran, let's say about climate change, about this, about that, right? If they, if they just use that platform to amplify these messages, it, we, would, we would really do so much better. And so the idea of the film is, 
is to amplify that message that um, it, 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 you know Iranians are still fighting, um, that there is a very creative community in Iran, uh, that immigrants, you know, immigrant stories are important. Uh, we need to understand each other. We need to understand where we came from so that we can create legislation that's empathetic and, you know, nicer so that we can be a, a, a better, a better world. That's my two cents. How about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure I would call it nicer. It just needs to be more constructive uh, <laughs> and goal oriented. And, um, you know, but the thing is, this film wasn't meant to be that sort of agenda driven film. It is really, as you said, it's a very, very personal story of one family and it just brings out all these themes. Um, and, um, you know, if it moves people to get active, that would be amazing. Um, so hopefully, people take that away from it that you know what Sarah was saying about not necessarily one single voice but one unified voice and the bigger and louder that voice um, the better the chances especially against a regime that is so unfortunately so good at crushing dissent um, you know Ellie, did you want to add anything at this point? Okay, so um, so just to wrap up, um, first of all, it's been amazing this past year to watch the youth, you know, the young people in Iran stand up against uh, against the oppression, um, and they continue. Um, we don't see much of it in American media these days, but um, but they're there every day. So um, we support you know we extend our support to them uh so what can people watching this uh who watching this interview uh do to support this film and your work you mentioned that you're uh you know that it's going to be on hbo um and what's next for you well the hbo thing is um basically the last step of the distribution um before that we will play a, a bunch of festivals yours being one of them um, this fall, and then also have a short limited theatrical release um, in New York and LA, and depending on how it goes, maybe in some other markets uh, in the US. And um, so that can be supported by going on our Instagram and sharing the link, uh, not to the film, of course, but <laughs> to the Instagram page and just generally spreading, um, spreading the word. Yeah, and I would just say if there's, you know, interest in in understanding what's happening out in the in in Iran right now, there are lots of um, Instagram, you know, users, lots of places where where information can be found. And the, the struggle continues in Iran. And actually, September 16th is the one year anniversary of Masa Amini's um, murder and that will be the 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 the, the every, in Iran there's a lot of um, the government is already trying to arrest and scare a lot of people into not uh, uh, protesting that day but I'm sure there will be a huge uprising that day and also in the diaspora as well so so yeah for us if you follow the Instagram that would be great it's a revolution on canvas and we'll be posting our information and uh, yeah. yeah and then Nikki's work a lot of people ask where to find that if you punch in Nikki Nujumi and google him you'll you'll find information about his various gallerists, um, but he will also, it looks like, have an exhibition alongside our LA release in December. Um, so there's um, there's something in the plans. And then we're also doing a festival in Telluride uh, in a few weeks where they are also trying to put on a, a show alongside the screening. Um, but it's relatively easy to find Nikki Nujumi and um, he has representation here in New York and other places. Oh, that's wonderful. Those are, you know, uh, some wonderful things for our audience to think about pursuing. Uh, definitely catching up with Nikki's work, but Sarah also, uh, as this anniversary uh, approaches to uh, putting their support behind uh, what surely will be uh, um, 
uh, a tumultuous uh, recognition of of that of that sad day of her death. Um, so thank you for reminding us all about that as it's coming up. And thank you both for, for taking the time to discuss this um, incredible um, slice of history that is seen through your own family dynamics. And we and I really want to thank you for the generosity of your spirit to share your personal family stories with us. So thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words. And for having us. Of course, of course. And so uh, for everyone who has watched today's GLOW, please be sure to go to partnerpictures.com or on Instagram at a revolution on canvas to follow information about uh, this film and surely about things that will come up next for this uh, fantastic filmmaking team. And join us, our programming begins September 19th and runs through the 23rd for our live programming. We do also have uh, a couple of virtual programs that will begin on the 25th and run through October the 1st. All the details about all of our upcoming events can be found by going to peacefilmfest.org. Thank you, and we'll see you at the next Globe.